Praise the Lord, God's people. I appreciate you for joining me this morning once more. It's such a glorious time that we have in God's presence, um, that we had in God's presence last week, Friday. And I'm trusting God that we're going to have another glorious season in God's presence. It's good to know God's word. And then after knowing God's word, we have to come to the place where we can do God's word. Most of the time, we, uh, we are still trying to catch up with all that we have known in God. I saw somebody post something on Facebook this morning, and the person said, if you preach one thing and leave the other, then you are a hypocrite. Yeah, in a way, but the truth is this, that um, most of the things we actually see before we hear, even science tells us that when vision comes, uh, is faster than hearing, than sound. To see is faster than sound. For example, sometimes when you hear the, when thunder strikes, you will have seen the flash. The two of them came together. But what actually happens is that you see the lightning before you hear the sound of thunder. Praise God. So a lot of times we, we see, we see first, we have understanding, we have revelation before our lives now begin to catch out uh, up, or with it, catch up with it. Paul said, um, uh, I, am, I am still striving, forgetting the things that are Bef uh, before that are past and going launching forward to the things that are ahead of me that I might come to the, no the, ex uh, the excellence of the knowledge of, of Jesus Christ so we understand that um, it is important for us to come to the excellency of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ um, we would have seen it before before we begin to catch up with it and I believe that we will not stay long at one position until we catch up with it in the name of Jesus Christ. That is the reason for the 12 gates of the temple. You know, it is the reason for it. So we'll be talking about um, speaking from the temple in heaven. You know, um, this is predicated on the fact that the temple in heaven is a perpetual speaking or speech of God for all mankind in all uh, generations. Now, the reason um, the, 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 uh, the, the other issue, the issues we have with it is that, of course, it, is, it, was, it, was, it was downloaded in the Old Testament to the people in the Old Testament. That was the first time the temple in heaven was, you know, open, but in a limited sense because those who saw it then saw it in a veil, with a veil covering their faces, you get. But it has been there for a long time. Every prophet, everybody that has gone, even John, and uh, Jesus Christ, all of them that were part of the New Testament or the Eternal Testament, <laughs> you understand? They all, they all saw heaven that same way, the way God gave it to Moses. So let's not um, miss it at all. Let's not miss it at all. Somebody, some people will say, let's not get it twisted. I, I, the truth is that even though it was first released in the Old Covenant, it is, the truth is that it is God's eternal perpetual speakings to mankind. Because you see, see all of this. Paul, he will see, talked about it. Uh, I've, sometimes, you know, I've been looking at, and I'm going to do a compendium of how many people have had a vision of heaven and I have a vision, had a vision of the temple. You understand? Um, um, uh, in all scripture, let's see whether we can get something from them. Now, Paul said something. Paul talked about, um, for we are coming to Mount Zion to the city of the living God, to the innumerable company of angels, to the church of the firstborn which are named in heaven. You know, so, uh, and then to the, to the blood of, of, uh, of, of the Lamb, of Jesus Christ, which speaks, which speaks better things than that of Abel. And then uh, we have come to God, and then we have come to Jesus Christ, the guarantee of the New Testament. Hallelujah. Um, so you, you see that there, Paul began to make, put flesh and blood on what is or what is being what was seen by in the in the uh, by Moses and which he put down on the earth at that time. We're going to discuss quite a number of these things as we go on. Um, we're presently looking at speakings from the temple in heaven in the book of Revelation. So all of these things were the speakings of God, eternal speakings of God. Because even now, you see, okay, they saw it as a brazen altar in the outer court but today whenever we come before the lord and say lord i have i have sinned i, I ask you that you forgive me lord you, know, you have come to the brazen altar at that time you have come to you have put your head upon the animal even though this time it is no longer a physical lamb it is a blood it is the lamb of god and the eternal uh, work that he had done for us uh, uh, in in taking our sin and our sins away 
Praise the name of the Lord. That's very important for us to note. Praise God. Now, so um, we're continuing with uh, um, what, what God was speaking with. The first thing we see the Lord speaking through was the, um, the menorah, the golden lampstand. Now, that golden lampstand was so important to God that he said to Moses that the light must never go out. The light must never go out. But um, and then Moses instructed the priest and the high priest, don't make sure. Whatever you do in your life, make sure this light does not go out. That means there must be perpetual oil. There must be perpetual speaking. You must tend the weak. You must make sure that the weak is very strong. You understand what I'm saying? As in the weak, W-I-C-K. Uh -huh. Make sure that the weak is very strong. Make sure that there's continual oil flowing. Make sure that there's continual fire upon it. So the, 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 that's the lampstand. Now, when they were doing all of this, it was possible that they may not even have... Um, understood what they were doing. You may have just thought they were just doing some rituals and all of that. And that's what we think when we look at them. Even we that have the benefit of hindsight. That's what we think sometimes. Now, but you see the very importance of it. Um, in the book of Samuel, I think it should be Samuel, maybe chapter 2 or chapter 1, there about, oh, uh, chapter 2 or chapter 1, there about. And then we see, um, the Bible says, and God, and air, E-R-E, air before the fire went out of the lamp of God, uh, the lamp of God in the holy place. That was uh, the situation we were in when uh, Israel was in when God called Samuel. So Israel had an irresponsible priesthood, a priesthood who did not, man, who did not attend to the fire, uh, who did not attend to it. So what did, what, God, what did God do? God rejected that priesthood. God rejected that priesthood and then brought in another priesthood, the priesthood of Samuel. Even though Samuel was not a Levite, so Samuel was a type of a Melchizedek order of priesthood. God brought Samuel in because of the disobedience and the, and the, and the, and the slack all around the priesthood of Eli. Praise God. And then we will see that also in the, um, uh, in the, uh, as, we, as, we, as we go on, you will see the lampstand, okay, this lampstand was one, in the temple of uh, in, the, in the tabernacle of Moses, by the time we get to tabernacle of um, or the temple of Solomon, you see them as ten, ten lampstands. That's what you see there. Praise God. So they mean something. By the time you get to book of okay, in is in, in, in Zechariah you see two lampstands, you know, two lampstands with two olive trees. You understand, and they have meaning because what was first mentioned in the law was was animated by the prophets were defined by the lord himself and by the apostles of the lord and then they were established by the book of revelation praise god so where the first encounter of john was with the son of man which was in the midst of the seven golden lampstand the son of man which was the midst of the seven golden lampstand you understand so those seven golden lampstand and the son of man described it we talked about it last week um we talked about it last week um uh, when we talked about what jesus christ said it was he said the 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 golden lampstand which you see they are the churches ah uh, praise god and then the the seven stars which you see in my hand they are the angels of the seven churches so the lord was tending to the lampstand and when he was tending to the lampstands um, what that was a picture of what he was doing but the fulfillment of that were the messages to the churches so the churches were the seven golden lampstands and the stars were the angels of the churches praise god now and then the uh, the, the the message of the lord was to uh, to john you know bible says um, the revelation of jesus christ when you get to Check chapter 1, the beginning verses of chapter 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which he gave to um, his, um, uh, which, which he gave to him. And then Jesus went and signified it by the hand of his angel to John. Hallelujah. To John. So, oh, good morning. God bless you. Oh, bring God, thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor Sophie. Good morning, Sayemisi. Good morning, um, Ufoma, Sister Ufoma. And every other thing that I may not have seen there. Praise God. Now, so you see, so the seven, the seven churches were God's business. Hallelujah. They were the people of God. The seven churches. You see, why are they seven? Okay, one of the reasons is this. 
you, if you observe very well, the rainbow, there was a rainbow around the throne of God. There's a rainbow around the throne of God. You see that in Revelation chapter 4, you see that in Revelation chapter 5. Now, the rainbow has seven colors. Now, it is still the same thing with the menorah. Hallelujah. The menorah, which is the, um, uh, the seven lamps, that is God's light presented in seven different places. Now, and you see the character of those lights in Revelation chapter 1 to 3. Hallelujah. That's where you see the message to the churches. So the message which God gave to John, I mean, to his, his, uh, to, to, which God gave to the Lord Jesus Christ, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Can I do a little bit of a description there? It is the revealing of Jesus Christ. Oh God. Can I go a little? <laughs> okay, let me, let me. I'm just saying that I need to go a little bit backwards. Now, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 1, Ezekiel was among the captives by the river of Keba. Ezekiel was a priest. Ezekiel, and as a priest, he knew the will of God. He knew the glory of God to Israel, uh, the, the promise of glory to Israel. He knew about the power fact that God's people uh, are, are, were destined and prepared, you know, and uh, predestinated for glory. But at that time, they were in captivity. At that time, there was nothing speaking of glory in their lives. At that time, they were in, um, they, they had a lot of problems. You know, they were captives. Jerusalem had been destroyed, the temple had been removed, and the, the kings have been removed, and they have carried them, priests and people, they have carried them away. So, Ezekiel was in a state of despondency by the river of Keba. I think there was a settlement, like an IDP camp, where they put all of the people that they just brought from Israel and Judah, I mean from Judah and Judea. So they, that just brought, so they kept them in an IDP camp. And Ezekiel said, I saw the visions of God. You know, I saw the vision and I saw the heaven opened. Hallelujah. Now, the same thing is what you see in the book of John. John was, I mean, in the book of Revelation, John was by the Isle of Patmos. He was at the Isle of Patmos. And what was he seeing? What was he seeing at the Isle of Patmos? He was, um, he, had, he was in the same situation with Ezekiel. He had known the glory of God for the church. He had known about the fact that um, the kingdom of God was coming and Christ was coming back. It was one of the people who preached that message, but lo and behold, what's going on here? So the Lord also spoke to him from there. You can see that they are very similar. Those two books are very similar in the understanding of what, um, in, the, in their purposes. Ezekiel was discovering the issues that were wrong with Israel. John was also discovering the issues with what was wrong with the, the church of God, so that we, to, to, with the intent of our perfection, of our coming into the right places, which God meant for us to have come into. Hallelujah. So, the first place where John came into, where he, the first revelation that he saw, when he heard the sound, then he said, he turned to see, and he saw the Son of Man standing in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And then, Jesus defined the candlestick, like I said, and he defined the stars. And then in chapter 2, we see, so that, that menorah is the, is the body of Christ. He said, there are the seven churches. You understand? Towards the last, uh, let, me, let me look for it. Um, that is um, Revelation chapter 1, the last two verses, please. I have something on my my electronic Bible that I don't want to remove the thing from the face of it. If I move to the Bible now, I may lose some of these things. Now, to the last verses, the last two verses, he told him what the, um, the menorah stood for. They are the churches. So God was speaking to the churches using the temp what was recorded in the temple of heaven. This, uh, that's how the menorah stands. In the temple of heaven, if we, at least God showed it to John, that's the way it stood. Praise God! And I'm going to say some things that may not be a little bit too um, in consonance with um, what is generally believed in, in believed in kingdom circles. This morning, uh, I will mention them briefly. Hallelujah! Thank you. So, so in Revelation in chapter two, he now began to speak to those seven churches. In other words, listen to this. In other words, what he saw as Christ tending the menorah, the seven golden lampstands. Now, it was not just one lampstand that has seven branches. It was seven lampstands that, that each one of them have their seven branches. You need to understand that. Hallelujah. 
There are the seven lampstands, each of them with their seven branches. Praise God. So those are the things that, that was where John saw the Lord. And that's the holy place because it usually is in the holy place that that appears. Hallelujah. So the speakings of God in Revelation chapter 2, chapter 3, were the speakings to the menorah or the fulfillment of the menorah. As the Lord was standing there, it means he was speaking. He was inspecting them to see, okay, I hope this is okay. We're checking the week. Okay, I think this is okay. This one is oil. This one is this. He saw it as a vision. But the translation of that vision were the speakings to the seven churches. You see the church in Ephesus, okay, you have lost your first love. Maybe the week was getting strong and there was no more oil in it. So, I don't know. The Bible didn't talk about that. But, you see, so he spoke to the Ephesian church. You have lost your first love. He spoke to the Laodicean church. He said, um, uh, you think you are, you, are, you are increasing goods. You understand? Because each of, those, each of those churches brought out the light of Christ. You understand? They all had the same things in common, but they shined in different types of, in, in one of those seven lights of the rainbow. Praise God to make a perfect light, a perfect revelation, a perfect representation of God in the earth. Hallelujah. So those are the seven golden lampstands, and that was what they fulfilled. Now we can look at the revelation of the seven golden candlesticks again. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 1, he says, um, let me read from here. Okay, um, can I also continue on that, um, what I was talking about? Yeah, I will still read Revelation chapter 3, verse 1. You know, um, he, he, um, he told one of the churches, um, the church in Laodicea, he said, he told them that they were no longer doing his will, they were no longer doing his word. And they said they should go and buy from him, I saw. They should go and buy real gold. They should start saying that, they should start looking at their material and financial prosperity as the, pros the, the sign of God being pleased with them and prospering them that they needed to look beyond that he said um uh, go and buy of me true gold true gold you know go and buy our i serve because they thought they had knowledge oh we have knowledge that's why we are increasing good can you look around and see those that kind of a church today you know but you see go to them go buy uh, 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 i serve from me and then you'll be able to see you will know that when you see where you see that you are wretched the first thing you will see that you are wretched you are naked that's what he told them the church in laodicea some people have called this period the age of Laodicea in the church of God. Uh, but I don't believe that it is just the age. Um, that's what William Braham says, the age. But I believe, with, I, I think I believe Brother Sam uh, Oyelese's uh, interpretation of that, which says that the seven churches existed in all the ages of the church, in all the seasons of the church age. In other words, today we still have the suffering church. Today we still have the church which is struggling with the devil um, in some areas because of the peculiarity of where they are situated and located. We see have the, the uh, prosperity church today. We see have the church of knowledge, but who have knowledge, but they, are, they have lost their passion. They have so much knowledge, but they have lost their passion for the Lord. And then we see have all of those churches today. So this is the menorah speaking to us. Hallelujah. This is the menorah speaking to us. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 1, it says, And to the angel, I mean, and to the angel of the church in Sardis write, that tells you that these are not spiritual angels, these are physical angels. You cannot write to a, a spiritual angel. Where will you post the letter? Is it um, UPS that will take it, or you post it with Night Post, or what your country's uh, postal office? Which address will you put there that will go? Who will carry it to the angel? So it's not an angel, it's not a spiritual angel that he writes to. He writes to the leadership of that church movement. Praise God. And they were leaders of church movements, even though they were cities, in cities. Praise God. Because there were people who believed there were smaller cities around those cities and smaller uh, hamlets around that smaller, those smaller cities who constitute each of the churches in each of those cities. For example, if you are, you are talking about, um, let's say, the church in Abuja, then you are talking of also Gwagwalada, you are talking about Suleja, you are talking about um, all those places, you are talking about... Uh, um, even places that are far away a little bit. Maybe we're talking about Lokoja and all those places because, because there are some churches that are, there are cities which are smaller, some smaller suburbs around them, you know, and all that. 
Uh, you are talking about Kefi, that's I'm talking about Abuja, and I'm using Abuja as an example. So they are more of rather than saying just one church, one physical physical located church, they are actually leaders of church movements, church thoughts. Just like we have leaders of church movement today. If we are looking for the prosperity church leadership, you can see them, you can count them on your fingers. You can talk about um, several people, Kenneth Copeland, you can talk about Bishop Boyedepo, you can talk about you know, if you are looking for the prayer movement church, you can look at certain other people as prayer movement church. This is not the prayer movement of this of today where we rise early morning and they do our one hour prayer. That's not prayer movement. That's the part of word of faith. They are only employing prayers for it. Praise God. The prayer movement people, there are people like um, Pastor Nuhu Kure, you understand in Nigeria, um, um, Get Simani um, Ministries. These are, these are mighty intercessors. Those are the, you know, and there are churches that are tailored along those lines. Maybe the CAC church also is also a prayer movement church. They are not word of faith, basically. They are prayer movement people. Hallelujah. So you can see churches of different kinds of churches. So all those churches, let's just assume that those, you know, all that we see here, without even an assumption, are leaders of movements of the body as at that time and they are still leaders of the movement of the body even now hallelujah but at that time maybe there was one um one leadership you know they had the presbytery they didn't have um just one person who is a, was a pastor but when he's talked about the angel of that church he's talking about the leadership of that church so he was writing to the leadership of those churches and now let's read he says this thing said he who has the seven spirits of god and the seven stars okay can you see now so let's define what are the seven spirits of god and the seven stars this idea that i said i will say that i'll just make mention of which might not be in consonance with what is believed generally in the prophetic apostolic circle especially in nigeria because a lot of time we talk about the seven spirits of god the seven spirits of god the seven spirits of god and the, the what it what it sort of tries to say is that they are uh um, there yeah, are seven, seven spirits. Or, uh, we don't we usually say it in, as the manifestations of this Holy Ghost. Not manifestations as in the gifts of the Spirit, but the different equipping, other equipping of the Spirit upon the believer. We don't, see, we don't say that. We say it as if these are spirit entities that are the seven spirits of God. These are not spirit entities. These, in fact, they are not... Uh, okay, we, in a way we can say, okay, they are part of the revelation of um, um, how the church functions in order to bring forth God's light in those seven areas. But they are not even, um, it's not even talking about, per se, the functioning of the Holy Ghost, per se. You know, it could allude to that, especially when we look at Isaiah chapter 11. But when we see what the scripture, how the scripture defines it, you will see that, um, that they are the, the body. <laughs> they are what Christ said they are. Some years back, I was in a particular small meeting and uh, I, I just said this revelation and somebody attacked immediately. Ah, are you saying that there are no seven spirits? So, so I just, I didn't want that kind of uh, altercation. So I just piped down. Said, okay, you know, scripture says that which you do not know, you will know soon. Hallelujah. So it's not as if there are some seven spirits that, okay, I have to go and meet the spirit of wisdom, I have to go and meet the spirit of... It is the Holy Ghost. Because when you look at what the apostle said, Paul said in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, that ever since I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, I do not cease to pray for you that the God of glory, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what the hope of his calling uh, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe so in that place we have seen the spirit of might we have seen the spirit of wisdom the spirit of uh, uh, revelation i mean under, uh, uh, understanding wisdom and revelation you know and then say you strengthen with power in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 we see the same strengthening with power with might hallelujah okay so but let, let's see this, say, the, 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 this thing said he that had the seven spirits of god and the seven stars let's look at what what the lord is saying here let's look at what the lord is saying here 
Now, when we look at Revelation chapter 1, what did Jesus Christ have? He had the seven lampstand and what? The seven stars. So, in here, in Revelation chapter 3, they have changed the names of the seven lampstand. They are now saying the seven spirits of God. Hallelujah. See, he that had the seven spirits of God and then the seven stars. So, these seven spirits of God are still the same thing as the seven lampstand. In that place, they were functioning as the body, but they still the body, but here it is emphasizing the light which every, the spirit communication of every, every branch of the body of Christ with themselves and with the world. Hallelujah. Let me give you an example. Um, if you were uh, a member, let me just, this is a limited example, very limited. If you're a member of Winner's Chapel, and then you entered their church, there was a, there's a spirit around that place. There's a spirit, there's a communication. And even if nobody spoke anything, you will feel you, you know, there's a spirit, there's, a, there's, a, there's an energy that flows there. Okay? Now, so also, if you were, if you're going to, after that place, you went to um, CAC, you will feel that there's a spirit also there. Even without any communication with you, you will know that there are uh, people who are there. I mean, rather, you will know that there's a spirit, there's an energy that is communicating with you. Hallelujah. So, each of the body of Christ, each of this body, each, each lampstand, there are seven of them, each lampstand communicates certain spiritual um, grace strength activity as the holy ghost expressed it through that body through that member of the body of christ so that is what bible is talking about he that had the seven spirits of god and the seven stars i know that works and all that in revelation chapter 4 verse 5 uh, it says and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices and there were seven lamps of fire burning you see Seven lamps of fire burning. These are not, I know certain teachers say, okay, it's like, okay, a small lamp. No, you see the same lamp stand that he's talking about. Did you see? This one even defines it well. You see the same lamp stand, say, seven lamps on fire. Seven lamp stand. He used another language, he's still talking about the same thing. Seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are what? The seven spirits of God. Did you get that? Did I say that one by myself? Let's say I alluded to that other one, which said the the um, um, said he that had the seven spirit of God and the seven stars. Okay, and I said the seven spirits are the seven lampstand because that was those are the two things Jesus dealt with in Revelation chapter one and in Revelation chapter three. They now changed the name of one of the two things that he dealt with from left seven lampstand to the seven spirits of God. But here in Revelation chapter four verse five, he is saying that this seven fire. Lamps of fire. He said, lamps of fire. Okay, what will lampstand do now if it was not to give fire, to have fire burning on it? So, seven lamps of fire. He said, and, he said, let me read it again. Revelation 4, 5. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Uh -huh. So, the operation of the Holy Ghost through every part of the body of Christ is the seven spirits of God. Okay, because there, there's, there's still a place where I was amazed when I was looking at it. If these seven spirits are entities, okay, let's see. He said, these are the seven spirits of God that goes into all the world. Ah, that's even, that's even heavier. Okay, God, what are you saying here? There, are there more spirits? I know there are many uh, spirit entities. But the way he's talking about it here, see, is it that there, there are some, there's another spirit that gives energy, that gives power, there's another spirit that gives counsel, there's another spirit that, you know what I'm saying? You know, are there other seven spirits along with the Holy Ghost? Because it's the Holy Ghost that we know that performs those functions. So what did he now say? The seven spirit of God that goes into all the world. He's talking about the seven churches and their activities, their activities in the world, and the light which they beam on the world. God, this one beams this light, this one beams that light, this one beams that light. By the time you bring all these lights together, it is the light of the menorah. 
burning. It is the light of God. It is the rainbow. Born. You know, the rainbow has seven lights. But together, one of the lights cannot be the rainbow. Alone, one of the lamps cannot be the rainbow. Did you get that? They have to be, seven of them have to be complete. So this is why the menorah, because the, 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 the rainbow that is around the throne of God is the same thing, communicates the same thing. Another way of say, talking about the seven lampstand, which is before the throne of God. Did you get that? Now, but one of the lights of the rainbow cannot be rainbow alone. Alone cannot be rainbow. Alone cannot be the rainbow. Praise God. So, um, um, how do you say it now? So, also, the lampstand, if it was one, the one that was in, um, um, uh, what do you call it, in the tabernacle of Moses, yes, that's okay, one, that was what God was speaking there. But the one that we're dealing with here, there are seven. One of them cannot be the church alone. Hallelujah. So, the seven spirits of God that go forth into the world are the expressions, the peculiar expressions of the Holy Ghost in and through the body. Okay, Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, uh, sent forth into all the earth. Seven, seven eyes, okay, these are the spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. That's what I was talking about. Seven eyes, this is Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. Seven eyes and seven eye. I mean, seven uh, lamps and seven eyes. Let's see again. The lamp that had been slain, uh, slain, having seven horns. The seven horns are the seven lampstand and then seven eyes. Hallelujah. The seven horns are the lampstand and the seven eyes. You know, and it says, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. We are the ones sent forth into all the earth now. Jesus Christ said, go ye into all the world. Have you? Are we not sent forth? They are the ones sent forth. It's when we want to make some mystery out of it. Yes, it's mystical and it's mysterious. Hallelujah, it is powerful. I'm not trying to take out of the heaviness of the words of scripture, you see. But we are the ones that are sent forth into all the world. So, this, this seven um, um, spirits of God are the uh, they are the seven uh, lampstands and they are the body. They describe the seven churches. Hallelujah. Why are they horns on the head of the lamp? Because they are the energy of the lamp. Your horn is your place of power, is your place of energy, is your place of strength. And I've seen that uh, um, uh, it is often taught that um, the seven uh, um, spirits of God, we we'll talk about the seven spirits of God, which is the book of Revelation chapter um, 11. The Bible says, and there, sh there shall arise a stem out of the uh, um, root of Jesse, and all that, and all that. And um, the Spirit of God shall be upon him. And then, uh, this is the Spirit of the Lord shall be upon him. And it was counted as one spirit. And then, the Spirit of knowledge, the Spirit of understanding, the Spirit of counsel, the Spirit of mind, the Spirit of, uh, okay, now, first of all, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of mind, and the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So those are six. But when you now go and say, okay, we'll go to the beginning and say, okay, there shall come upon you the spirit of the Lord. And then you now say, the spirit of the Lord is different. And then after the spirit, the spirit of the Lord is just one, then the spirit of knowledge and of understanding, I mean, the spirit of count, um, knowledge and wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and of mind, and the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So it's like we are making the spirit of God, the spirit of the Lord different from the spirit of um, uh, knowledge, I mean, wisdom and understanding, counsel and of mind, and knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. But when we look at the way the apostles use it, all of these are the attributes of the Holy Ghost. Praise the name of the Lord. They are the attributes of the Holy Ghost. And they, they, are, they describe also the, um, the spirits that are upon the Lord Jesus Christ, the effective working of the Holy Ghost upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we see that same effective working in our lives as believers and as members you know, of the body of Christ. These are the things that the body of Christ give. I think I'm running out of battery. I'm so sorry that um, um, he didn't charge on time. Please, can you check? Praise God. Okay, so, so this is what it is. So, well, um, that, these are the spirits of God. These are the spirits of God 
that the Bible talks about. They are not spirit entities. They are not spirit entities. They are the spirit of God. I mean, upon, I mean, they are the, the, the effective working of the Holy Ghost in the body of Christ to project a particular characteristic of the body of Christ. I mean, of the anointing of Christ, of the nature of Christ upon the world. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, tomorrow we shall continue again. We want to look at um, the other speakings um, from the throne, from the temple, uh, the original temple in heaven. Praise God. Thank you very much, everyone. Now I will... Okay, we can meet tomorrow again. I don't want us to be cut off by the sudden death of the phone. Okay, so by God's grace, tomorrow again we shall meet and... Um, I uh, pray that uh, can we um, please read the scriptures and confirm things by yourself. Thank you very much. God bless you.